that you can't get anywhere else, this is the place to be right here. This is the place to be in, in our Father's house. And nobody can do me like Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read today a scripture in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I'm going to minister just, I didn't know what to put for a title. I just put steadfast and immovable. Steadfast and immovable. That's how God wants us to be. He wants us to be steadfast like a rock. He wants us to be constant. He wants, he doesn't, he, he doesn't want us going up and down all the time. He wants us to be filled with his strength, with his power, and to walk in total victory. And, that, and that's what I've been praying for you today. I'm going to read just one verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And it says this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And boy, I know some of us really need to hear this because we can get discouraged and sometimes we can feel like we're carrying a big load and, and, and sometimes we just need to hear a word like this, be steadfast, unmovable, always. We just need that, that little pep talk, that little cheerleading talk because, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to go on. And, and, but today I'm going to ask you to let go of the weights. Whatever is pressuring you, let go of it. Whatever uh, you feel like, man, I got to get this done or I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just, just let go of that and cast your care upon the Lord because he cares for you. And he wants you to be, no matter what's coming against you, no matter what's going on, he wants us still to be strong and steadfast because God already knows what he's going to do. God already has a solution for your problem. Even though you may not understand it, even though you don't have a, a, an answer, I can tell you what, God already has a solution for you. And I, I believe that with all my heart. And so let me pray. Father, pray you would bless this word in these next few moments that we have together. Lord, you know every need, so just take over today. Whatever needs to be said, Lord, let it be said. And I pray for your help and your ability, God, to speak as I should. And I'll give you all the glory and all the honor. And the church agreed by saying, amen. amen. That, that very first word in this verse, that word, therefore, what that is, it's a transitional word. It's a word that says, you know what, I've just shared with you some other information before that. In other words, I'm hungry, therefore, she now go get me a burrito from Taqueria by Arda, you know? It, 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 it's, it's, in other words, therefore is the application of whatever truths or whatever was just said above and before that. And so when he says, therefore, he's basing this on the truths that have just been stated. And those truths are this, that Jesus Christ was no longer in the tomb, but that he has risen from the dead and that he is alive forevermore. And the facts of this, therefore, are that Christ rose from the dead and that our gospel, as, as Pastor Brian said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And so we know there is power, amen, in the gospel. We know that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Therefore, amen, it's, can I tell you that we have a gospel that is powerful enough not only to help us or, or, or to get us to improve a little bit, but to transform our lives and to make us into a new creation. We don't have to stay the same. We don't have to struggle with the same problem year after year. We can grow. We can transform. We can become who God has called us to be. And what he's called you to be is so much greater than anything you ever thought of yourself. What his plan for your life is, is so much bigger than whatever you can dream up or come up with. Well, I'm just going out of school and I'm going to do this and this and this with my life. Oh, no, no, no. Wad it up, throw it in the trash, surrender your life to Christ and say, God, take over, do whatever you want to do in my life. And, 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 and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is powerful. It is life transforming. If you're here today and you need a new life, can I tell you, he says, I'll take out your heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Only God can do that. Man cannot do that for you. And what he's saying in this resurrection truth is that death has been 
defeated. And those who believe in Jesus Christ, they, though they were dead, yet shall they live. They will die no more. Jesus Christ was buried in a tomb. He, was, he died on the cross, buried in the tomb. Three days later, he rose again, and he is alive forevermore. Those are the truths that he was just talking about prior to him saying, therefore, and we know because he rose again, that of this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a house made in heaven, not with hands, eternal. And we ourselves are going to live forever and ever and forever. If we have put our faith in what Jesus did on the cross, if he's your Lord and your Savior, you will never, ever, ever die. As a matter of fact, in 2 Timothy, he says that Jesus Christ has abolished death. That means it is no more for the child of God. Whenever we die, guess what? We don't really die. We just change addresses. So if this pastor happens to croak, <laughs> don't worry about me because I know where I'm going. My, amen. This earth is not my own. I've been bought with a price. I belong to Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, don't shed no tears, but just have a good barbecue with some ribs and tri-tip at my funeral and celebrate, amen, because my God, because he rose again. Therefore, because of all these truths, amen, I got to get something to drink. I'm working too hard. The Bible says right above it, it says that this mortality shall put on immortality. That this corruptible body shall put on incorruption. And, and, and we're going to all be blessed. And can I tell you, he has abolished. I love that. There is no death. Get, get this. Abolish means done away with. It is no more. There is no death for the born again believer. But I'm not only happy about... Believe me, I'm not in a rush to, to die. Amen. But let me tell you, when that day comes, it's going to be glorious. If you're a born-again believer, death has lost its victory. Death has lost its sting. There's no more sting in death because our sins have been covered under the blood of Jesus. And to be absent from the body, amen, is to be present with the Lord. And now that's our future state. But I want to let you know I got some right now blessings that this therefore applies to. And Jesus, uh, uh, the, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I'll be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God says that we get adopted into his family, and now we're no longer orphans. <laughs> we're no longer those who have no comfort. We're no longer those that got to fight these battles alone. But we have a heavenly father who will send the Holy Spirit into into our lives to empower us to comfort us to give us the strength we need to live victorious in this current and this present day and I want you to know I become the recipient of his steadfast love see we're talking about steadfast and immovable but we before we talk about our response I want you to know, first of all, God is steadfast in his love for you. Do you know that his love for you being steadfast, it never changes. It never alters. It doesn't go up and down. God doesn't love you one day, amen, and not love you the next day. Or one moment, not love you the next moment, amen. God is merciful to us. And because he loves us, his mercies, amen, they are new every single morning. God is a God who gives us his steadfast love and it lasts forever. It's permanent, constant, unwavering. It's a state of being constant and unchanging. He says this about you and me. We are crowned with a crown of loving kindness. And it's constant over our lives. Listen to Lamentations 3.22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. If you're wondering, well, you know what? I blew it. And I blew it again. And I blew it again. And I blew it again. No, don't look at your neighbor right now. This is not for those back in the cheap seats. This is for all of us. Because from the pastor all the way back to that cheapest seat in the very back, we all have blown it again and again. And, and you know why we're not consumed or done away with? It's because his mercies are new every morning. God has enough mercy for you today. If you will call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Listen to Psalms 90, 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing, you hear that? unfailing love. 
God's love is unfailing. It's, it, it, it's never going to leave you. It's never going to move. For, it's going to be constant over your life. His unfailing love is constant and steadfast over our lives when we're born again believers. This is an old song that we sang. Thank you, Christy, for doing that because he lives song. I love that song today. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me now. Oh, no, let me start in the beginning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, now unto me. So based on the fact that one, Jesus saved me. Based on the fact that Jesus has abolished death. Based on the fact he's given me, if you will, a new spirit. He's going to give me a new spiritual body. Amen. That's better than being bionic. I don't want to be the bionic pastor. I want the new spiritual body because I'm going to be able to go through walls. Man, no more pain. No more misery. Amen. I am going to have a new body and I am going to be filled with a blessing and the power of God in my life. Now... Based on all these facts, he's adopted me into his family and his love for me is constant. Then my desire is, okay, God, you've been so, so good to me. You knew there would be a catch to this message, right? <laughs> you've been so, so good to me. Here's the catch. Now, what do I want to return back to the Lord and give? Not that, not that someone's going to twist my arm and make me do this. No, because I realize what God's done for me and what God has promised me and his promises are always yes and amen. Based on that, then I want to give myself to him. And therefore, that's the therefore in the beginning. Uh, all this is to talk about therefore, based on what he's done for me. Therefore, this is what God says he would like for his people to work at, to strive for, to go in, in this direction. And he says, therefore... Based on what he's done, based on your unwavering, unchanging love toward me, I want you, my beloved brethren, that's us at HLC, I'll add that in, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. I want to respond to God's loving kindness, amen, with, with being thankful to him and appreciation and what I see in this message, first of all, I see number one, if you're taking notes, I see an urgent message. Because when he says, therefore, he's talking about what just taught, what was above this and before this. And it's in there where he talks about the return of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is going to return for his church. And can I tell you, it says he's going to come in the last days. And right now, all the scriptures have been fulfilled. All the prophecies are, have come already into alignment for the soon return of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but when I look at what's going on in this world, all I can say is we better be ready because Jesus could split those eastern skies of glory and he could return at any time and come back for his church. And the Bible says when he comes back, the, the, the trump of God will sound. And those that are in the grave will hear his voice first. They'll rise up out of the grave then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and this message is an urgent message because we can't get ready once Jesus comes back it's too late then because this is what it says it says behold we shall be changed in the moment man you might be out here amen doing a barbecue for Pastor Tuck amen just cooking away you know and, and Jesus uh, the rapture takes place and you know what that barbecue is going to be set there empty all that stuff you were flipping them burgers with it's going to be sitting there that spatula and guess what you're just going to be taken away and it's going to happen and you're going to be caught up to meet the lord in the air amen and he is going to amen give you a new body you're going to be spiritual you're not no more pain no more sorrow and guess what's going to happen amen you're going to have a smile like you've never had in your entire life amen a million dollar lottery wouldn't compare to this a 50 million dollar lottery wouldn't compare to this no but here's the thing is that in the moment in the twinkling of my blink your eyes one time that's how fast this happens and you know what that means it means we need to be ready 
This is an urgent message. We've got to invite our friends to church. We've got to tell others about Jesus. Amen. We've got to get out there and put up. I was telling Pastor Brian, maybe just one person driving by, see one of those signs we're holding up and the conviction. That's why we pray. Someone said, are you going? I'm going to try to go out there. I can't stand that long, but if, if my car can park real close, man, I'll just park in the car and pray. Amen. Because when them people drive by and see that sign of people are praying, guess what's going to happen? Their spirit's going to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe a tear will come down their cheek, and they'll say, I need to get back in church. I need to get closer to God again. But we've got to let people know that Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon, and they need to be ready because once he comes, that moment, that twinkling of an eye, it's too fast. They cannot get ready. Let's just keep praying for our family members. Let's just keep praying, amen, for our neighbors. We've got to start inviting people to church. Man, what would happen if everybody invited two people to church for the next six weeks? This place would be standing room only in here. Amen. Let's be busy about the master's business. I think it's good preaching. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Are you ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? I didn't ask if you're perfect. There, there, there's no perfect people. But have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and made him the Lord of your life and asked for his forgiveness? And then are you living for him? Are you attempting to grow spiritually? Are you attempting to get closer to him? Can I tell you, we can't get caught off guard. We've got to be ready for when Jesus comes. And we have to take as many people with us as we possibly can. He says, today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not promised. We never know, amen, when he's going to call us home. We never know the day nor the hour. And so we must be ready. I, I, I beg you today. If you've not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, accept him. Ask, he's got a free gift of eternal life for you. You just have to receive it and allow him, amen, to be the Lord of your life. And, and number two, it's not only an urgent message, but it's a directed message. Because it says, beloved brethren. Now, brethren, that means the Christians at the church at Corinth. He's writing to them, but it's also this is what's known as a universal message. It means it's not just for that one church, it's for the church at large. So this message is for those who are already born again believers that are living for him. And this is what he says. He says, I want you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in what? The work of God the Lord. And, and, and as I thought about this, I, I thought about so many things. Well, I'm not involved in a ministry team or I'm not doing something at the church. Can I tell you what, what your job is right now, what your work is? You're not really accepting Christ really. Or, your job is to get yourself to that place of total surrender. Whatever's keeping you back from total, because if you want that transformation I talked about, God doesn't Give it to curiosity. See, well, maybe I'll try Jesus out. I don't know. Like, like he's another program or something. Jesus is so much greater, so much more powerful than any program. I thank God for the programs. I love the programs because it helps us to get clear-minded and to get to the place where we then can think straight enough to receive and to dedicate to Christ. And so, but Christ is the one who can change and transform. Your work is defined. See, when, when, when I came... When I came to Christ, I, 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 was, I was able to surrender instantly. And that's why I had such a moving experience. Grandma Sita, my wife Naomi, it took her a year. She was in church for a year until she surrendered completely. And so just because we're in church every Sunday doesn't mean we're surrendered completely to the Lord. And so we have to come to the place where it, it's not just church attendance. It's coming to that place where I say, God... Whatever you want to do in my life, I yield it to you, and I surrender completely to what your will is for my life. And, 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 and those of us that are in the church, amen, we need to be busy working for Jesus. Can I tell you, you'll never lose by working for Jesus. You'll never lose. You know what God said to my heart? He says, if you'll take care of what belongs to me, I'll take care of what belongs to you. Amen. And what, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And 
You need to understand, this church, it's not the building, it's the people. And we all belong to God. And when we take care of what belongs to God, you'll never, ever, ever lose. And, and I encourage, you, you know, in any given church, I'll just tell you this, I, I, I'm not, I hope you don't think I'm being mean or pounding, but in any given church, there's a principle called the Pareto Principle. And that is, in most all churches, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And, and that means 80% of the people are not involved. And if you're here and you're visiting, you're just, this is not for you. But those of you that are attending faithfully and regularly, many times we fail to take that next step. And that's that next step that when we get plugged in and get involved in, on a ministry team and do what God has, has given the church to do, then what happens is that there's a transformation that takes place in our lives. And he says, not only are we to be steadfast, unmovable, but you know what he says? Always abounding. That word abounding means over and above. I remember for so many years we had three services a week here at church. And I, I'd preach all three of them, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. I remember coming to church like at 7.30 in the morning early, getting ready, praying for the service. Then we'd go out after church, have a quick lunch, come back. I'd pray and study all afternoon. I'd do the evening service. And after a 13-hour day, I'd be walking out to the car in the parking lot to go home. And there was this gentleman who would come up to me quite frequently and say, Oh, Pastor, you know, I'm always the last one to leave the church, but on the way to the parking car in the park, would you give me a ride home? And guess where he lived? He didn't live around here. He lived in Watsonville. Talk about going above and beyond. I don't remember ever telling him no. And I don't think I complained to anybody except for maybe my wife. I don't know whether I did or not. But, but, but the truth is, it says abounding. That means to go over and above and beyond. And so after working 13 hours, I drive another hour to go all, and I live in Scotts Valley, so I'd go all the way down to the South County and then come all the way back. And, and, but guess what? Let me tell you something. I wasn't doing it so much for them, although I loved them and tried to minister to them. It was, it was all for Jesus. It all counts toward kingdom work. And, and let me just tell you how blessed I was. You, you, I, I remember so many times, I could tell you, I, my first job I was taking groceries to uh, older people that didn't have the money or the car to drive and get groceries. That's after I first got saved. And, and I can tell you, we took a lot of groceries to a lot of people. But can, can I tell you what happened, though? I didn't know the scripture that says, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he'll repay. I didn't know that scripture. I should try to help people. Guess what? I've reaped. I don't know, a hundred truckloads of groceries back over the years. For every bag of groceries I gave, I reaped at least a whole truckload of groceries back because I gave it to the Lord. When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord, he'll repay. Amen. Amen. I remember always using my cars. Amen. I, I, the next job was driving the church van. I'd drive people to church and go pick them up and Buy them ice creams on the way to church and back, and 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 uh, had one old cranky lady named Sister Price. Pastor, you're a little late today. What's going on? You be, better get me on time. I don't like being late to church. She was the fussiest old lady I'd ever met in my life. Then one day I was fasting. I was fasting one day, and she all of a sudden got nice. Pastor, I got a cherry pie I made for you. Can you come in and have a slice with me? How many of you know love was greater? I had, to, I had to break that fast and go have a piece of cherry pie. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? I've never lost by giving to the Lord. I, I was thinking about it today because we got the prayer request for that family that had a, my family, my brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, my children, none of us have had a, a really bad traffic accident. And I, I, I don't know, I, I just don't know, but I did all that driving for the Lord, used my cars for the Lord all the time. I, I don't know. It, it says he that gives to the Lord, it says, well, I gotta, I'm going to get to my last point. I can't go there yet. And, and, and so it's a message to the church. 
You will never lose by working for the Lord. And, and, and the truth is, with any job, there's got to be a denial of self. It's like I didn't feel like driving that guy out to Watsonville after a 13-hour day. Sometimes when you're involved in ministry, you have to do it when you don't feel like it. You have to do it when you're tired. You have to do it when it's not convenient. And, and it takes a real commitment to do that. But God says it's his will that we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And whatever that is, amen, you can bake cookies for people. If, it, if that's what God gives you to do. If you do, I like chocolate chip. <laughs> you, can, you, you can just put that big smile. Maybe yours is in, your gift is encouragement. And just your smile and just a nice cheering somebody can make all the difference in the world. Maybe somebody wants to go to that women's retreat and they really don't have the money. You know, maybe someone could just, well, here's, here's $100 toward that. And, Whatever it is, but we need to be busy about doing the Lord's work. And I believe those of you that are able, being on a ministry team where you do something on a regular basis for God, I'm telling you what, being a pastor, sometimes when you got 20% of the people doing 80% of the work, I, I went in yesterday and, and Brian and Morgan were in there, and Sister Morgan, she's trying to get people to fill some of the, these classes and doing all this, and I could just tell she's really struggling because it's just hard to get enough. It takes, it takes a whole tribe to run a church like this. I think there's like 25 people probably working right now between next door doing bagels. So it takes like a crew of 25, and this is what Brian said to her. He said it was a whole lot easier to schedule people. Amen. When we worked at Firefish, they were paid employees, huh? Well, I guess, guess I got to say this because it just came into my heart. We should be more faithful based on what God has done for us than any paid employee would ever. They couldn't pay me enough not to work for God. Well, pastor, I'll give you $100 an hour to work Sunday mornings. I don't care if you give me a million dollars an hour. I'm going to come do the Lord's work on Sunday morning. More important than doing anything else. And so, amen, he says to abound in the work of the Lord. I believe that he gave this message because stuff happens. And and uh, I'll tell you what, this, this scripture, it leaped off the page into my heart because I was discouraged this last week because we had the couples over and, and I did, I had couples over another time, really wanting to minister to them and love on them. And the first time I had a spaz attack, I, don't, I had like a little panic attack or something, I went, got up to speak and go, uh, the, the, uh, I, I couldn't get words out. And, and I was so frustrated, it, it was so frustrated. Too much coffee, amen, trying to do too much, I don't know. And, and, and now, right before this, we had one Friday night, I, felt, I didn't fall, I twisted my ankle coming down the stairs, had to go to ER, I didn't think I was going to even be able to do this one on Friday night. But guess what, I read this scripture, and it, and it encouraged me so much. Be, I want you to be steadfast, unmovable. I can't let a little sprained ankle keep me from doing what we're doing Friday night. And so I just had pulled my boots up by the bootstrap, said, Jesus, help me. The next day, she now had one like this. She couldn't walk on it for five days. The next day, I think hers was much worse. Uh, it's not that I'm bionic, she now, believe me. But, but hers, she couldn't walk on it for five days straight. And so, I, and this thing blew up black and blue. I mean, you see me I'm, when we're trying to... Anyways, that scripture encouraged me so much. And the Corinthians, they had stuff going on in their church. There were divisions. There were sexual problems. They weren't like the Jewish people who already knew the scriptures and got saved. They were total heathens. They came out of idolatry. Came out of polygamy. Came out of everything you can think of. And they had all these. But in the midst of those problems, he says, this is what you need to be encouraged. And we have problems. But when we have problems, it's still be steadfast, unmovable. It's like the enemy wants to play king of the hill with you. If you're involved in ministry, what you are, you're king of the hill because I'm doing what God wants me to do. And the enemy is going to run at you full force like a 300-pounder linebacker coming in trying to get around and, and you're the quarterback and trying to push you off that hill so he can stand there and say, ah, you, ain't, you ain't working for God no more. And, and push you. You know how many times I've wanted to resign come Monday? 
But guess what? I take a walk on the beach. That's why you got to stay close to Jesus. If you're going to work for God, you have to stay close to Jesus. Because it takes the Spirit of God to strengthen you, to comfort you. Because you're going to want to resign every week too. But you're going to have to say, you know what? I'm going to go to God and let God refresh me, encourage me, and help me. And by the strength of God, even though all these problems might be going, I'm going to keep moving forward and do what God has called me to do. We have to be soldiers. We're not tourists. We're soldiers. As a good so endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And God wants you to be strong. He wants you to be filled with courage. So, so this is a message of encouragement today. You're getting awful quiet in here. I hope it's coming across as a message of encouragement. In the work of the Lord. You know what, you know what I, I thought too is, is that please don't look at this church as pastor's church or Pastor Brian's church. It's your church. It's all of us. It, it, really, it's his church. It's none of ours. It's none of ours. We all just are servants to fulfill the roles he's called us to. And, and because he's gifted all of us, it's why he, it's so important that we be steadfast in the work of the Lord because God already has a vision for this church and a plan of what he wants to do. And all, that plan involves everyone who considers this to be their home church. And that plan is part of his plan for all of us to work together to be able to accomplish whatever that vision and that will that God has for us is. And so uh, be encouraged. Don't, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. But, but pray. Don't, don't, don't feel, oh, pastor's preaching to me, I'm not involved in a ministry, weekly team. No, don't, don't feel that way. That's, that's not what this is about. What this is about is you pray. And then you just be willing. We're, we're not twisting on, oh, you're going to need to, no. But you just pray, say, God, what would you have me to do? And then go see Pastor Brian. Amen. Amen. Say amen, Pastor Brian. And now I said it's an encouraging word, right? It's an urgent message. It's a directed message. It's specific, steadfast, unmovable. I think I covered that already. And lastly, it is an encouraging message. So encouraging. Listen to what he says. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. And I wish everyone, team member next door right now, especially those changing diapers in the nursery, I hope you're watching, I really do. Guess what? Your labor is not in vain. Especially them old dirty diapers, them blowout ones, man. <laughs> Every diaper you change, you need to know your labor is not in vain. Sometimes it feels like we give and we, does anybody ever feel like, man, I serve and I serve and I give. And, and, and man, I just don't see the results. I just don't see the, it, listen, when we serve the Lord, it's, it works like this. Is that he says it's not in vain. He says, no Get this, no, be assured of, be steadfast in your knowledge that your labor, whatever you do for God, it's not in vain. You need to know that. Anything you do for the Lord, he takes notice of. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love in that you have, sh that you have shown to the saints and that you've ministered in his name. And, 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 and so when we minister for the Lord, whatever we do, so that even if you give a cup of cold water, Amen. In the name of the Lord to a disciple. So what we do is in our service, we give it, we bring it over, we put it in a big old pot. But when it gets put in the pot, it becomes invisible. And so we look in that pot, oh man, I just don't see it. But it's all in there. Everything you've ever done for the Lord ever will do, it's in there. But it's just you can't see it. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? <laughs> well, I remember when... We wanted to go into ministry. God had called us to go to Bible school. One of the things we had to do to go there was to sell the house. And so, being that I'm a tightwad, amen, I didn't call a realtor up. I just did it myself. I started having open houses seven days a week, man. Because <laughs> if this house didn't sell, we didn't, go to, we didn't go off to Bible school and follow the call of God. So every, every day I'm out there, man, I got the house all fixed up open house signs out front. I had a sign company so I could make all those nice signs. And, 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 and man, 
got this guy, the guy bought the house. Praise the Lord, we're going off to follow Jesus. And the and, and thing is, it couldn't close in time. We had to get back over to Louisiana, 2,300 miles away prior, amen, to the house closing. So I made a trip down to this guy's bank and looked the banker right in the eye. This guy's pre-approved, right? This guy, this loan's going to go through. Oh, yes, Mr. Tuck, it's going to go through. And guess what? After we got 2,300 miles away from him, you should have seen us. Naomi's driving, has a seven, 1979 Camaro. Amen, wire wheels, you know, really cool looking blue. And, and the windows are down. I'm in the passenger seat. Wind's blowing in my face. I'm seeing all the little stripes going down the highway. And I'm off to follow Jesus. Man, it was the most glorious thing in the world. And she's, I even had a chauffeur. She was driving me. It was great. And, and behind us was a U-Haul trailer, four by eight with everything in it. And, and uh, so uh, we get back there. And just, man, I'm just all pumped up. And all of a sudden... That sale falls through, and I needed that money. It had to sell for us to be in Bible school, so I had to have that money from that house to follow this call we went on, and now that check wasn't coming. So I called my dad. My dad was a real rascal, and I said, Dad, can you water the yard? After about a month and a half, Dad, can you, can you help me get the place rented, you know? And, and so my dad calls me back about two weeks later. Got, got it all rented, son. They've already uh, given notice at their other place. They bought a refrigerator for it, and everything's on. Tra what, 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 Dad, tell me a little bit about who you rented the house to, please. And, and so it turned, well, uh, he's a bartender, and he, he dun, 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 dun. well, is he married? Well, he's got a girlfriend that lives with him, and I'm thinking, oh, not in God's house. God help me. <laughs> and so I said, Dad, they're not living in my house. So that ain't no way. So... I called up Grandma, who was real spiritual, told her about it. She said, now, Elder, you know that that, pe that man, he didn't know nothing about Jesus. He doesn't know anything about where you stand or none of that. And now, because he's already made plans, given notice, bought refrigerator, it would probably be worse to tell him no. So you just let him move on into the house. Amen. So we let him move on into the house. And here I made a total mess out of everything. I mean... You know, I got so ambitious to follow the call of God. I did, uh, I think I kind of made it all happen. But how many of you know, when you want to work for the Lord, amen, God covered my back, amen. Two months later, this guy decides he wants to buy my house. Within three months, I had a check in the mail, man, for the full amount that we needed for everything in Bible school. And can I tell you, when you decide you're going to follow God and work for God, now that same thing happens. Whether you're going full time out there, you just work for God around this house. Amen. Guess what? I believe those that will work around God's house when it comes time, they get booted out of their house. A door is going to open for them to get a new house. Why? Because you worked on God's house. You took care of God's house. God's going to take care of your house. Amen. Whatever. You help support the ministry financially and do what God's called you to do. You lose your job, it's a kuna matata. Don't worry about it. You're gonna, your provision's coming. I have never seen anybody who's been a faithful tither hurt, get hurt because they lost a job. Never. Amen. 23 years of being here, never have I seen anyone who's a faithful tither get hurt because they lost their job. It was just an... In, because the, the money doesn't come from the job, it comes from God through the job. And, and, and God always provides... He always provides. I'm starting to take too long. i got to get out of here. Brian, you're supposed to go like this, and I start taking too long. This... Oh, there's Grandma Sita. You're not on the ball today. She out. <laughs> but it, it is an encouraging message. And, and I, thought about, I thought about this. I thought about Chanel and my son Jordan. You see him up here doing music, and Chanel was here leading worship for many, 10 years. I mean, and, and the thing is, she had moved to Fresno, and she was driving back here every weekend to do our worship for us. Jordan moved to go to school up there and somewhere in Napa. Every weekend, he's driving back here to do the worship for us, to work for the Lord. And then I saw Chanel after she got done there. She moved up back up here. I seen her go to work someplace in San Jose, and I can tell you this, she did a lot of driving, but let me just tell you, I saw her just 
be exalted and shot right up in her place of work. She excelled so much in everything she did. She got to a place where she was making bank in short time. And I said, man, I wish I made that kind of money. <laughs> Jordan, same thing. Because he took care of what belonged to God. Pastor Brian got him a job down at Firefish on the wharf. He started making good money down there. But then COVID came. They laid him off. So he got unemployment. Then the federal government said, we're going to give extra 600 to everybody on unemployment. So now he graduated with his four-year degree. And he says, you know what? I might as well stay here since I'm getting $900 a week, amen, to go to school. And he got an accelerated master's program. And within a year and a half of that, and, and the government paid all the bills through that, with a year and a half, at 23 years of age, he had his master's degree already. And, 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 and I heard him in the, in, the, in the room learning that guitar. He didn't always know how to play. He's always pounding out, going, sounding like a frog, you know. <laughs> he didn't know how to play, but he, but he just kept practicing. Kept pra and now look what, what's, what he does now. He's just, just so anointed and so good on that guitar. And, and why does he have that kind of ability to sing like that? Have that because he used his, his talents, his services for the Lord. And when you work for the Lord, the Lord is going to bless you. He's going he's to take care. You take care of what belongs to God. God will take care of what belongs to you. Amen. I am done. I got more I can say, but I'm done. I can't say no more. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Could we just pray before we dismiss? Father, I thank you so much. Lord, you know what everyone needs, and I just pray you would right now, God, begin to speak to our hearts. Begin to, Lord, uh, maybe not even something I said, whatever you want to say to your people, Lord, let us have ears to hear right now, Lord, because we want to do your will. We want to work for you the way you call us to work for you. We don't want to do our own thing, God, and, and, and we know that Jesus is coming back soon. We want to be ready, Lord. We want to be ready. Would you do me a favor? Would you all stand to your feet right now and just let's just bow your heads and Father, thank you for these people that are standing before you right now. Lord, I love them and, and I just pray your blessing on them. I just pray, Lord, you would fill them right now with your love. God, I, I, I preached about how your love is steadfast. It's unfailing. May they experience that love right now. I pray right now you would open your heart to the love of God. There is no greater day in my entire life than when I said yes to Jesus and his love flooded into my heart. It was the very best day of my life. And today he wants you to know how much he loves you. And the greatest example of that love is that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. And I want to ask you if you're here right now, and please nobody looking around, just out of respect to the Lord, if you're, would you say, Pastor, I, I need to make a dedication of my life to Christ, and I need to accept Jesus and his free gift of eternal life, that I may be forgiven of my sins and be ready for his return. And if that's you, just lift your hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. I see, I see your hands today. Thank you for your sincerity and your honesty. And I don't like to embarrass anybody, but if you would give me the privilege of just leading you in a prayer today up here, you know, this is something we've all done at one time or another. I'm going to ask you to to be a little bit bold now and take the next step. It's a step we've all done at one time or another. And if you've raised your hand or if you would like to, maybe you didn't raise your hand, you, still, you, you would like me to lead you in a prayer of dedicating your life to Christ. I would be so honored to do that. And I'm gonna ask you to step out from where you're at and come right here so I can pray with you today and lead you in that prayer. Please come over, over here on this side if you could so we Leave room for others to pray on this side over here. Thank you for your sincerity. Thank you for coming today. 
I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And those of you in the congregation, if you would like to receive Christ, would you say this prayer with me? And church, help me, will you? Dear Jesus, I surrender my life completely to you. Forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I would have power to live for you. Change my heart. Change my life. I give it all to you. Everything I am and everything I'm not, I lay it at your feet. Now let's just stay down here and pray for a little bit. I'm going to open these altars now. And church, if you'd like to come and pray, you can pray on my left side. No one will bother you at all. Or you can pray where you're at. We know that some of you need to be dismissed. It won't be a formal dismissal. Please just don't disturb those that are here praying. These altars are open. We spent a little time in prayer today. God has spoken to us. Can we just take a few minutes and reflect on the word and just say a little prayer to God before we go? God bless you. If I can get some of our people to help me pray, I would so appreciate that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. God, touch these that are here. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with your love. Let the love of Jesus touch them right now. Let the love of Jesus fill their hearts and lives. May they experience you and encounter you today, Lord. That it would be life-changing and life-transforming. Lord, we want to be encouraged today. Thank you so much for what you do, Lord. Thank you for working in our lives. Thank you for working in our lives, Lord. Thank you, God, for 